All right, so um, the first thing today I wanted to talk about is should we move the features to config? I don't think we really finished that discussion on the um, Gitter channel. Um, so what I meant by that was... Um, so basically, in the way that the model takes... Oh, no, that's not really where we want to go. So models take config as their argument, right? Um, and then, uh, and then they take features as an argument to the context. Um, and so, right? So we take features here as the argument to the context. Um, but I was just thinking, you know, that kind of creates. That's not really consistent to the rest of the pattern, to the way everything is done, right? Like, we could pretty much save ourselves, like, doing um, all of this. Uh, where is it? Well, okay, so the regression line stuff, like, we're reaching into the parent object that actually does the loading and then, you know, deciding based on the features what we want. And so if we're reaching into the parent to grab the features, then maybe the parent should just know about the features. Um, and like we could just use a separate file for each thing. Because uh, I was thinking about like TensorFlow and the way that TensorFlow works with the guy who's doing that new pull request. Or, oh, I guess he's not. Uh, he hasn't made a pull request for that yet. Um, but he was looking at the TensorFlow stuff and it's the way that it works is it also creates the model dir directory based on the features and then he realized that like the um the hidden stuff is also a part of it and then then i started thinking all right well now like maybe we just need to be hashing the whole config and using that because if we're going to make multiple things like if the underlying framework starts being dependent on multiple things then maybe we should just you know be loading that in the main context here or in the main you know in the main object that does all the config stuff um so i don't know food for thought uh what do you think uh i i actually thought you were talking about the features that we were working on earlier the thing oh that oh like code features yeah yeah, this is a problem with machine learning terminology. Like, it features labels. Like, it's, it's, yeah, that's <laughs> it's very <good>. generic. <laughs> yeah, I need to change all the stuff that says label still. Yeah, so uh, I think this might be a better idea. Okay, let's just do it then. Right. We'll we'll go ahead and do it. So. Actually, the config stuff is not really clear to me yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the config stuff to, is kind of a mess. I, yeah, I never had the time to actually look into what is actually going on. I just used the methods you described in the tutorials and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the deal is the the problem is right now that these so these args and config method are basically their helpers to um to bridge the gap between like argument parsing on the command line and these Python classes that are, you know, subclasses of name tuple. Um, so what we're eventually, what I think we're going to be able to do is just inspect these config objects. Cause I found, so I did some really hacky shit um, yesterday um, and I was like reading the source code of the typing library and because the typing library it doesn't. I think. I think we ran into this when we were doing the SLR stuff. Um, so when we did, no, I'm just giving master. All right. So when we did scikit, um, scikit base. Okay. Where is that? Right, let me make this a little bigger. Um, oh, was this it? No, it must be the other one. Second so models. All right. So when we did all this wacky magic in here, um, we did this from collections import named tuple, and I believe the reason was why was that? I think we put a comment in, but this is going to relate to what I'm talking about here. If that is the right comment, 
Um, we should have like config. Yeah, config. Okay, so we did this name tuple, right? And the reason why we did it this way instead of the typing name tuple, which is where we use everywhere else, was because we didn't put a comment. I should have put a comment. Uh, was because you can't specify type hints and default values to the typing to typing version of name tuple. Um, now the way around that I found out yesterday um, is I'll. I'll just show you for the sake of... Do, are you interested to see what's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Um, let's just make a new section for this. Configuration. Um, default. Using typing. Tuple. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of like random Python magic here. But, so what I figured out how to do was DFAS. Um, where is that? Where is it? Where does it live? Um, commits, come on. Export spec with definition, I believe it was this one. Uh, ha! Yeah, this is it. Okay, so um, so the name tuple API does not provide a clean way to make a new name tuple class where you specify the type hinting of the default values, right? So, but we can look at the source code here and here. We'll we'll just go over that again. Okay, typing. Right, so you can do like this is what we've been doing and you can do so normally you could do this right and define the class and say okay type hint equals this value um, and then you could also use it like we wanted to we wanted to use it this way and specify you know name string uh, ID int and provide default values but you can't uh, you can't really do that um, you can't like provide that information um, to the, the default value part. Was yeah, you can't provide the default value. So, but we can do, and then there's some notes here about how like it's using annotations instead of field types. Well, so annotations is like a built. It's like a. Uh, it's a. It's one of these types of methods, right? These double underscore methods that get set. Well, this is where things get tricky. So. Um, name tuple is this class, right? And you can create it like this, and it's got this new thing. And the new, I don't know if you've seen the new method before, but it's a, it's a strictly Python thing, right? Um, yeah. So it's the method that gets called when you create a new instance of, or a new class based on this class. Um, so when we subclass, new gets called. Um, and so then there's things called meta classes and so a meta class defines how a class works so like you know how you can define like class methods and stuff um, when you define a meta class any method so not a class method any method within the class within the meta class becomes a class method within the class because it's essentially a class where the instance of this class, so a meta class, an instance of a meta class is a class. Um, so the instance of name tuple meta is name tuple. Um, and so what we can do here is now we can define when the name tuple class is instantiated, um, like when this definition here happens. Uh, this new method gets called. So we're creating a new instance of that class. We're creating a new type. Um, and so name tuple, meta classes are derived from type um, because you're defining a new type. Um, and this is, I mean, this is sort of a lot of information and it's taken me a while to get here, but um, it's interesting stuff if you ever want to go play with it. The point being here is 
when you use the new so uh, py type um, so the type built-in function defines a new class right and we were using this when we were defining um, the models um, and so that was down here we create a new type we call the name plus model context we say it derives from model context and here's the um, you know class class scoped properties um, and so that's that's what's going on here um, and we so since the meta class is a subclass of type um, the new the the new function or the new method takes the class that you're about to create um, the name of that class, the base classes, and then the um, and then the properties, right? So you know, like this. So um, what we can do here is, I looked at this code and I was like, okay, well, it's doing this is just a dictionary and it's just calling git. Um, so that means that when you pass like when when this happens here. Um, when we define like an actual class, like just with regular syntax, annotations must be the colon type name thing. It must be like an auto prop, pro, uh, auto generated field for that dictionary. Um, cause sure enough, if this, this is just a standard dictionary, like the git method has got to be supported. Therefore, if I pass a, um, if we pass a dictionary with this property, then it should work and sure enough it does work um so basically using this code right here it's like really it's a really simple little bit of code here well i mean it's not entirely simple but it it's it's a few lines and it gives us exactly what we want um i think i might i think we might need to raise like an issue in the regular python bug tracker i might go do that for this um because it kind of seems ridiculous that you can't do this by default. Like, this is kind of a stupid way to have to do this. But basically, what we can do now is we can dynamically create name tuples with type hinting and defaults. Um, and what that's going to allow us to do is simplify a lot of this stuff uh, that we did where we were generating these config methods. Um, so we generated these config methods based on the signature of those classes. Um, and we also generated the uh, config structures based on the, sig the signatures of those classes, um, the scikit classes. Um, so now what we're going to do is we'll probably be able to just generate this config class, um, this you know subclass of name tuple, based off of the uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll create that right, and we can generate it based off of something if we need to, like in this scikit case, or what, what we'll probably do then is have these config args and config methods just inspect the subclass of name tuple that we're using as the config and dynamically generate all this helper stuff that's going to be used to you know help arg parse and the HTTP API communicate what is that config class that we're using here. Um, so that's probably like a lot of dump information dump there, but um, that's that's the plan going forward. The configuration is going to get simplified. Um, is what but, I'm thinking. But like, how how is that necessary to do it with the scikit stuff? Like, it is simplifying something very much or something like that. So basically, uh, because here because we, we we are just using another method. The problem with name tuple in the typing module was we cannot pass the default values, and we just pulled out something from the standard library instead of that. We use name tuple, right? The, the yeah. Yeah, so we use this, but we couldn't specify type hinting. And if we can specify type hinting, that means that when we're doing the, you know, uh, so when we're doing this arg here and we need to say the type, we can grab the type from the value of the type hint within the config now. Does that make sense? Okay. And that way we can yeah, just yeah. dynamically generate the args and config method. Like uh, we could I, probably not have a args or config method like at all anymore because we'll just make them, you know, auto generated based off like the config property being set to, you know, whatever that config class should be. Okay, I get you. It's it's basically just like the config stuff's gonna get simplified. Um so 
uh, yeah, because now we have the name of it, the default value, and the uh, the type. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about help. We might have some other sort of dictionary that basically maps, you know, config things to their help strings. Um, but basically, that way we won't have to like have these args and config methods everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's just it's sort of just like good news, right? Um, let's see. I'll just put that in here. Um, so. Control C, Control V, Control C, copy, paste. Okay, so um, this will allow us to auto generate uh, config and args methods because for methods. Okay. Others based off of um, type, uh, type hints and defaults in the subclass of typing dot named tuple. All right. Um, sorry, that's kind of long-winded. Um, so we'll move the features to config. We were going to talk about another thing with the models, weren't we? Oh, we should probably recap what we talked about um, with, um, uh, yeah, yeah. So you implemented, uh, uh, you did the model not trained, right? Yeah, I am done with the model not trained. I just wanted to ask that, should I do the model not assist for accuracy? Or not? Uh, yeah. And so we decided, so we decided uh, not to do model not assess for accuracy um, instead report float nan so not a number as the confidence as confidence for models which um, can't or which you know need to have accuracy assessed before they have a confidence. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about on that front? No, not actually. Okay. Th this is all. Cool. Uh, for the HTTP API, things are pretty much you know rocking and rolling here. Um, I'm about ready to push the JavaScript examples. Um, I'm going to be doing that in the next few minutes here. Um, sorry, I know I said I was going to do this all like two weeks ago, but I, I, there's been a lot of stuff I had to do. Um, just, just, just one thing, like, yeah, for the model error stuff, like, uh, but I, I, I didn't, I, I just opened the scikit code after a long time and I didn't remember that we were saving the confidence or we were calculating it again and again. Like, ah, uh, let's see. Um, I can't remember either. Um, let's see. It looks like uh, sometimes very really weird. Like you have written the code and you just forget it. Yeah. So it looks like we did. It looks like we did confidence. It looks like yeah, we did confidence happens when we assess for accuracy. So we'll probably need to add that little. Um, um, we'll probably need to make this method here um, so okay since confidence uh, is returned when um, is set when accuracy is evaluated uh, we need to have this method return float nan if uh, if features has is not present in parent if features has is not present in self dot parent dot saved yeah does that sound good yeah okay cool 
Um, yeah, and that way, yeah. So then, then if it is, if the confidence, if it did get assessed for accuracy, that key will be present, and we'll just, you know, it'll just use the right confidence value. Um, so, yeah. So this is the model API. Um, so basically, what's going to happen here is um, things work the exact same as they work with the regular, like when you're writing code. Um, so. So let me get an example here. Um, this. Uh, oh. So test scikit. Okay. So where's the test? All right. So we do this, right? So with the way that, that we do all the DFFML stuff, we do right the first async width, and then we do this to enter the main object, and then we do the second async width to enter the context. Um, so the HTTP API works the same way. Basically, we, um, uh, let me pull them up side by side so we can map Python to, um, not Python, um, to JavaScript. Um, Where'd he go? Okay. All right. So the first thing that we do is we ah, oh, you pay touch screen. Um, okay. So the first thing that we do is we well, okay. So the first thing you might want to do is list all the models. Um, so you'd say like list slash models or list slash sources. And it returns to you the basically the result of the args method. Um, so it dumps out all the stuff that you'll need for configuration. Um, then you take this information and you fill in the values, right? So for arg, you end up filling in. Oh, this probably needs an example. Um, but for arg, you do like actually there is an example in here. So, okay. So this is what the populated config looks like. Um, so the you say the config. So the source has this config, um, uh, and it is. Right, your config. This in this case, we sent a configure request here. Oh, I do have an example. Never mind. Sorry. Um, so this is the list of all the things that that you could use as arguments, right? And then here is an example of using them. So you say configure source. This source is a CSV source, and I'm going to call it my data set. Um, and then I send this uh, thing here, which is the filled out version using that args information and we say okay so the file name is data set uh, read only is true um, and then all that stuff gets parsed um, you know according according to the way that we were parsing it uh, just like the command line um, so it's just uh, when you type arguments on the command line it get parsed to this structure um, so we just use uh, the same the same uh, the same format here we're going to just send it over um, and then here's an example of configuring a model. Uh, you know, here's the directory, um, and it is, uh, you know, it's some path to model directory where the model has been saved. Um, then you create a context, which is the, you know, the second async line. So we're going to take the plugin type, so like source or model, the label, which would be like my data set or my model, and then the context label, which is now like SCTX or MCTX, right? Um, so, uh, to create a source, there's no special arguments. You just say, hey, I need to check out one. To create a model, this is where, so this is why I wanted to talk about the feature stuff, is because to create a model, when you create the context, now you have to pass the features, uh, which means that this API now needs you to send the features um, as they're, you know, they're serialized with what, what their representation in JSON would be, right? Um, so we say my model from my model create my model context, which is like model passing these features here uh, as MCTX, 
and then it'll say, you know, okay, or it'll say you did the wrong format for features. Um, does that make sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then for sources, it's just, there's, you know, you can list all, you can grab one repo by the key, you can update the repo by the key, uh, you can get all of the repos, um, and this is a, you know, it supports iteration, so if you had like hundreds and hundreds, you would say, okay, give me one at a time, or give me seven at a time, and it returns this iteration key, and you just hit the API using the iteration key until iter key value is null, and then you know you're at the end of the, at the, end of the sequence of repos in that source. Um, so now for the model APIs, what we do here is write its model slash the context label that you created, so like my model context, um, and then the method that you want to call in that context, uh, which is, you know, just train predictor accuracy, and then any arguments following that. Um, so for training, we send a post request um, with the JSON body being the source context labels that we want to train on. Um, so, uh, so this would be like my model context, and then we say, uh, you know, my training data set um, is the, we created a source for the training data set, we checked out our context, and we labeled that context my training data set, um, and now it will use that context, it will go through and say, it will do this here, it will say the model context of, you know, whatever that context label we passed is my model context uh, dot train, and then it'll pass a sources object that has my training's data set as the only only member. Um, and then it just returns null if there was, you know, everything was okay. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, later we'll definitely want to like have something where it streams back the logs because uh, it's going to, you know, it'd be helpful. <laughs> People will like to see the logs, right? Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll do that eventually. Um, so accuracy, uh, we send a post request. Um, same same format, only now the response is going to be, you know, the accuracy value is a float. Um, we give it the source context that we want to train on. And then for predict, we just send a repo. Um, so we send a repo object, like the JSON representation of a repo object, which can be the reference for that is just like, you know, up here. This is what you'll get as a repo object. Um, you know, you'll send the same thing back to update it. And if you want to predict it, you send that same format of object to the predict uh, URL here. And right now, the predict URL is always just going to end with zero. Um, because I didn't write the stuff to do that iteration support yet. Um, so iter key is always going to be null, and it's going to do all of them. Um, so yeah, and then you get back a repos, you know, a key. You get back two keys in the JSON object, the iter key, which is going to be null for now, um, and then repos, which is a key value mapping of source URL to um, uh, to the object um, to to the repo object with the prediction value in it. Um, and yeah, and so basically now, basically what we need to do is, you know, I'll, I have some JavaScript code that I'm going to clean up here with the new context stuff because before it just had configure because um, sources didn't need to have something passed to it like uh, models do with the features. Um, and so, uh, so now I need to update that JavaScript example, but I'll push that the example code. Um, I believe I referenced it before here. Yeah, this. Um, so I'm going to update this code, and then we will also update this code after meeting. Um, and we can go through it right now a little bit. Um, I'll just show you what I've been doing here. So you'll know what it looks like. Um, no, no, not that. Okay, so it's just a bunch of JavaScript classes, um, but and this is in progress. But this is like this should be source context. Um, CTX equals okay, and it's gonna look you know pretty similar to the way that we do things with uh, with the Python, but you know not exactly, of course. Um, uh, read it 
Secret Source Context. Okay, so uh, I'll make this a little bigger. Properties. Does that that look good? Good sized. Yeah, you forgot the space, I guess. Oh yes, thank you. Okay, so basically, so this basically, so this function here, this is just that API.js file, and so this function runs as soon as the page, as soon as the page gets loaded. Like if you start a little HTTP server in that examples web directory, um, with you know, uh, do you know about the Python simple HTTP server? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you just start that in that directory, um, it'll it has this index page, um, and it all it does is include the API.js, and then you can open up the console and start like messing around with it. Uh, although, of course, what you're probably going to want to do is you know you're going to want to create that React app, um, and then you know include this stuff as a as a as a um, you know, you're just going to throw this file in there. Eventually, we'll want to make, like, you know, a whole NPM repo for this um, so that it, it lives on its own, right? Um, and you can just say, like, you know, yarn add this this thing, uh, or the, the DFFML API, and that way you could include it in any project. But for now, we'll just copy-paste the file in there. Um, so... So Darsana is actually working on the React project right now. Yeah, she said... Sorry, what? She said that she would be starting the project because I am not actually getting the time to do. It. Okay, cool. Yeah, so well then, if she starts, if she starts on it, I think you know she'll probably be doing the source stuff first, anyways. So, and you're going to need the sources to be configured before you can go pass them to the models. So, it's uh, that that'll probably work out fine then. Um, she has experience with JavaScript and React, so yeah. Just cool. Um, yeah, I told her that you had that, uh, yeah, she was, she was expressing interest in that, so I said, you know, you have that code ed, um, org, and maybe you would add her as a, um, you know, as a contributor to that web UI or to the UI repo if you wanted her to just, like, push to that and get started. Otherwise, you know, she could do it on her own branch and you guys could combine later. Yeah, I, I, I'll ask her that she wants to do it under that org or if she wants to do it separately. Okay. Both okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I bet you, you know, she'll probably get started and then, and well, so I'll show you right now, right? So we create this API, um, this DF, you know, the main API object. Um, and so this, this just says uh, window.location.origin is like if we're on local host, whatever, um, you know, whatever port you start the HTTP server on. So Python 3.7 M HTTP dot server. Um, Four 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 like five four, four. Let's just do nine zero nine zero. So uh, from the examples slash web directory run uh, this, and then um, we let's see. Uh, then we need to also run um, the DFML service. HTTP, um, let's just, I can't remember how it runs now. Um, so, DFF, oh, that's right. Okay, so we just start, we start, we start up the, basically, we start up the HTTP server, um, service HTTP uh, cores star insecure. Or star um, port like eight zero eight zero, and then we go to HTTP localhost um, eight zero eight zero, um, and then the following line line creates or wait uh, we go to nine zero nine zero oops. Nine zero uh, creates a new API object where we've um, substituted the port um, 
9094 port 8080. Um, so that it, which which is where the API is listening. Um, okay. Yeah, and so then, so we create this API object, and then we say, okay, I want this source that's going to be my data set, um, and then we configure that source, and we point it at my data set.json, and in between here, we maybe upload the my data set.json file, um, and uh, then you know it says we've configured it then we create a new context um and we're going to need to say like you know my data set context um and then we can do things like grab the repos and you know then we have like an this is just like creates an array of all the repos um um and beyond that like then what we'll do is we'll have things like you know we'll have we'll do the same stuff we'll we're, we'll configure a um, a uh, so we'll create like now we'll create a model um, um, and so we do like model equals api dot model uh, my model um, and wait, uh, oh yeah, we should probably say that like this is scikit model. So this would be like scikit lr, um, and we're gonna call it my model. Um, and then we configure that model, and and we might do like you know model or mctx mc oh model.context, never mind. And then we do something like await mctx.train, um, and we'd you know pass in the list of sources. So we'd say like source context. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, that it's it's going to be very, it's, it's basically like the, the API is going to be almost identical um, to uh, the Python API is the idea, right? So does this sound like, does this make sense and stuff, I guess? This is like, this was simple, like, but I talked to Sudarshan and she was saying that the sources API is not up yet. Is it? The up? sources API? The sources API is up. Um, uh, so... We, I just need to, um, I, I'll, I'll clean up this Python code and then I'll ping her back um, because the Python code, well, so the, I think it was, I probably miscommunicated. It's the model API that's not quite up yet. Um, so that'll be up as soon as I update this JavaScript code. All the tests are running and everything works and I updated the documentation. Um, but the JavaScript code, which is this file, which is basically, you know, the API objects and the examples of how we use them is not up to date right now. Um, so I'm going to update that, run the um, run the CI on it, and then I'll merge this pull request, and then it'll be all ready to go. So you guys can just, you know, go ham on the on the web UI. Um, but yeah, It'll be. I'm. Ex yeah. I'm excited to see. I'm excited to, to see what you guys do with it. I'm. I'm sure you both are are busy, um, but uh, and I'll, I'll obviously contribute to it too. Um, but you know, I want to. I want to see see what you guys see what you guys come up with uh, before I before I jump in here. Um, plus, I've got like a million other things I got to do. I've got to finish this DFAST branch. Um, this is pretty pretty sweet. Um, uh, oh, do I have that open? I don't, um, bam. Uh, I can show you this temp, should I, dot MDD. Nope, okay, it's empty. Uh, I was generating these. So basically, um, like the, uh, oh, close 444, does this, or not, that's, um, nope, okay, never mind. All right, well, that I think you saw all those graphs that I was generating, those flowcharts. Um, so I've got lots more flowcharts generating now. 
Um, and then the cool thing will be that we can take, basically you can take these little operations and like an operation might be like the model train stuff. I've said this a million times, you know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. And you can we can make the flow chart and then we can stand it up behind an HTTP API or CLI or anything. Um, it's going to be really fun. It's almost, it's almost there, finally. Um, so that's cool stuff. Um, but so yeah, you know, I won't I won't be able to jump on the on the it, on the web UI for a little bit, um, but I'm I'll be definitely you know have enough bandwidth to answer any questions that come up. Um, so yeah, cool. Yeah. Anything else you wanted I, to? I, yeah, I actually wanted to work on these projects, these couple of projects, but I have like six subjects and six projects. Yeah, man, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Well, I mean, good luck with that. That sounds nuts. I'm sure you're busy around the yeah, clock. So, so, so all this, like, till November end, I'm completely busy. And then during, after Christmas, I'm totally free. Like, this is yeah. like a long time coming. Huh? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like well, don't, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure you're super busy. So, you know, do, you don't, don't have to feel like you have to jump on the meeting if you don't want to. Or like you know you're too busy because I'll just post the uh, video links and then once you have time again like because an hour is a long time when you've got when you've got a million things to do. So, so uh, are there any more good first issues? Like I have a bunch of people who want to start contributing to DM. Oh yeah, so good first issue. I think I tagged a few recently because um, Hacktoberfest came around, right? Um, let's see, Hacktoberfest. Um, this one's easy. Um, this one's kind of easy. Uh, requires signed off by. That's just like a little scripting. This guy never did this open API definition. This would be really helpful. Um, uh, 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 I'm just going to say I'm going to consider this open until I see a WIP pull request. Um, so that others, that anyone who has time uh, can work on this, or yeah. yeah. Actually, my friend has been attending the meeting with us for like past couple of weeks. Oh yeah, is he just yeah, sitting he there with been, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he has been sitting right beside me, but oh, okay. he's like he's more like he doesn't understand what's going on. Oh, okay. Such, um, like you can say hi. Well, tell him I say hi. Hello. Hey, how's it going? I'm John. I know. I've been sitting here with him for the past month. Cool. I just don't awesome. understand anything. Yay! Well, hey, I'm sure you will. Like soon enough, right? Do you uh, do program? Like, have you been doing programming and stuff? Or are you are you just unfamiliar with DFFML because it's a giant crazy mess that we've created here? <laughs> I'm just very confused with it. I'm I'm just very shy and I can't. It's just a very yes. It's a very big mess for me. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It's hopefully going to get a lot a lot cleaner soon here. Um, so, cause I think, I mean, things are, things are shaping, things are getting pretty clean here now. I think what we really need to do is focus on the documentation. As soon as I get this, uh, DFAS branch done and this model API now, um, I'm going to start documenting the hell out of this. Um, cause I think we have some okay documentation, but it needs, it needs to be better. Um, I wanted to like, uh, contribute, but I saw that, uh, like uh, this, well, this guy, Patil took this issue. Yeah, he, well, he hasn't said anything, I mean, he said that, like, on September 15th, so that's been a while now, um, I'm just gonna say, like, if you want to do this, uh, uh, I'm just gonna tell, yeah, that would be great, this is, like, uh, I think, well, I put the links in there, but basically, this is, like, a giant YAML file, which just describes, so basically, if you look at this, and, like, all the URLs that I put in here, and, you know, the types of responses and stuff, I'm pretty sure that you can go, actually, well, you may be able to just take this thing here. Um, basically, there's, they have this inspector, and if you fire up that, so if you down, if you pip install that, that HTTP API, um, and then, like, point this inspector thing at it, it should be able to, like, generate that, the file that I'm talking about for you. Um, 
I just I just haven't I have I have not used this tool before. I've used the other side of this tool, which takes these files and generates um, clients in any language, which is really cool. But I haven't had time to go do this, so I thought this is something that you know might be might be a good first issue. Uh, but that would be awesome if you wanted to do that. I would appreciate that. Um, and then what's really cool about that is you'll generate you'll generate this YAML file, and then you can create a client in any programming language. So like all this stuff that I'm writing by hand over here in JavaScript, it'll just generate all of this code, like all of this code here will just get generated um, based on that file that you, that you write um, or that you create with that tool, which so, you know, people could use it from Ruby, like it, it, would, it would be great. Um, so yeah, that would be awesome if you if you have time to do that. Yeah, so I, I'll be pushing the new model tutorial soon too. Cool, that would be great. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Uh, it's, I mean, basically, right? If you just get those three, the three train predict accuracy, and then like if you could, if you could talk a little bit about like the applicable features too, that would be good. But you know, whatever you can do is great. Um, I just want to make sure. I just need to make sure to have all this done by next Friday, um, because that's when I'm going to go present. And so, like, I don't, I don't know how many people are going to come to my talk. I don't, I don't imagine it's going to be a ton of people. Um, but uh, whoever is there, I want to make sure that when they go and click on the docs website, like all our docs look really good. Um, so if you don't get to it, just let me know, and I'll make sure I get to it. Um, but yeah, you have machine learning in the title, right? Uh, in the title? No, in, it's not in the title of the talk. No. Actually, machine learning is the buzzword, and uh, yeah. I see most of people going towards the talk that has machine learning in it. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I probably should have put machine learning in the title. I'm at this security conference, and I know a lot of security people are kind of skeptical of machine learning. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll try to. Uh, Maybe I'll try to show them machine learning after the fact. But at, when I go to the Python conference, I'm definitely going to put machine learning in the title. Um, hopefully, if I get accepted to that one. So. Are you writing a proposal to PyCon US? Uh, I haven't started doing that yet, no. But I tried to, I, I did the PyCascades. I sent that one in. Um, and I still need to do PyCon. But that's sort of, I think the deadline was, I can't remember when, the, when was the deadline, PyCon US. Um, what was the deadline? Uh, it was like it was a little bit out here. I know it was after the time when I have to do this talk. I've got all my deadlines, you know, stacked up on me. December twentieth. Okay, yeah. So that'll give me like a month after I finish this talk to write the next talk for this one. <laughs> It'll probably be like you know pretty similar in format. So. Python yeah. is very popular. So. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that this is a big one. So thanks for giving me the heads up on this one. This I'm actually applying for financially to attend it, but I Oh yeah. Know. That would be cool. That would be really cool. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, I mean, yeah, I hope you get that. Um that would be great. But other than that, um so I'll just tell this guy in case you're too busy, we'll leave this open for others. Sounds like someone was interested. Oh, and is your friend? Uh, I didn't catch your name. Are you on the Gitter channel? Yeah, he's the he's Saksham Arora. He oh, okay. actually had a pull request merged. He had his name in the. Oh phone. yeah, yeah. You are this guy. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Well, all right. Have a have a good one, guys, and uh, good luck with all your studies. I'm sure that's a lot of work. So, and yeah, I'll see you next week. Bye. Okay. Bye.